to give you all my tips and information to prepare for your first visit to Akama Bay Wellness and Beach Resort. Um, the important thing to keep in mind through this whole thing, preparation and while you're there, is that it's a vacation and the rules are there's practically no rules. Doesn't mean that there's no codes of conduct and things like that and that there are literally no rules because there are, but you can do this vacation any way you want and you can be as relaxed or as structured as you want. You can do very little to nothing or you can be busy the whole time. There, there's really no um, perfect way to do it. But I wanted to get you ready by giving you just a few things to keep in mind when you are preparing. I've made some notes so I can keep myself on track. First and foremost is packing for the trip. Um, I'm not famous for being a light packer. I never will be. Um, that works for me. But some people really can pack light and I've seen people that have made the trip for a week almost and they brought nothing but a backpack. Um, that's difficult for me because I don't live in a t-shirt shorts and a swimsuit with a pair of flip-flops for the entire time, but you know, some people do. Um, you know, you could throw in a skirt and you know, a blouse for the nicer a la carte. But I, I kind of go overboard and I'm okay with that. It's my vacation. I do it my way. You do yours your way. But here's some general guidelines of things to remember to pack. Um, you kind of want to look at this as a bare minimum of what you're going to bring. Um, first and foremost, of course, you want to bring swimwear, whatever that means to you. A lot of people are in bikinis, well, the women, um, men, of course, swim trunks of all different kinds. But there's plenty of women that wear one piece, some wear tankinis. It's very humid, and so the less you wear, um, the more comfortable you'll be. So think about that when you're choosing whatever your swimsuit is, as far as fabrics and and uh, colors especially. Um, think comfort because it's not a fashion show. It's the beach. Um, I kind of treat it a little bit like a fashion show, but that's me. Um, I like to have a lot of different options. I basically don't wear the same suit every day. Um, but you're, you're going to maybe want to consider a cover-up, especially if there are days when it's maybe a little bit chilly. It doesn't tend to get that way, but one time we were there, there was a hurricane that came through, and so there was a day or two where it was a little bit chilly. At least it felt that way for us because we had gotten really used to it being super hot. Um, and then, of course, the cover-up will help to protect you from the sun, especially if you're concerned about that. Uh, but again, think comfort, but you can also think fashion if you want. Um, as far as your footwear, you're basically going to be in flip-flops the entire time. Now, at nighttime, I will sometimes change it up for some nice sandals. And if you're going to go on an excursion, you're going to want footwear that um, you can like, for instance, if you decide to go to the Koba Ruins or you want to go um, to Chichen Itza, I don't know, Tulum, any of these places where you're going to be walking a lot. And that's when you're going to want to have at least a pair of walking shoes, something comfortable. And then, of course, socks to go with that. Um for the rest of the time, it's just flip-flops. And my philosophy on everything is two is one, one is none, which means that if you have one pair of flip-flops and they break, now you have none. So I recommend bringing two, or while you're down there, you can always pick up a pair when you're in town. Uh, if you're going to dress up, um, you, can, you can still wear flip-flops if you're a woman. If you're a man, that's gonna depend on the restaurant that you're in. But when I dress up, I include the shoes. Uh, you'll want to think about if you're going to dress up for dinner, what's that going to look like? You don't need to go full on cruise level evening wear. It's not the kind of resort. It does have nice restaurants and you will want to think about wearing some nice clothes, but that could be anything. 
for a woman, it could be anything from a cocktail dress to just a cute skirt and a top, um, a summery dress. You could do um, the flowing linen um, pants. Um, it's just kind of whatever you feel dressy in. You don't have to dress up, but it's fun. And trust me, they make they cater to you in these restaurants in a way where if you're not dressed up, you feel a little bit underdressed. So even if you just bring one or two sundresses, you're good to go. For the men, you're going to want to decide, do I want to eat at the gourmet a la carte? If you want to or you want the option to, you're going to need to bring a pair of slacks of some kind and um, closed toe shoes. Um, and then a shirt, not tank top. It doesn't matter what kind of shirt it is, it's just not sleeveless. They do not want you to, to come in in a sleeveless shirt. So a shirt with sleeves, pair of, you could even do yoga pants. Tim has a couple of pair that he uses. Matthew um, wore a pair. I'll shoot a picture of that in here um, just so you can see, you know, kind of how they dressed for the nicer restaurant. And it's comfortable that way. You're not feeling like you're sweating. But that's for the men. Um, but for the women, again, you can wear your flip-flops to the nicer restaurant. But I would, I would say bring a pair of sandals just so you feel like you're a little dressier. Because you'll feel more comfortable that way. It really, they really do a good job. Um, as far as activities on the resort... Most of it you'll be able to do just in your swimsuit and maybe a um, t-shirt and shorts. Uh, most of the activities are very beach oriented, but there is a yoga studio and you're, you're going to want to think about clothing that you can stretch in. It, it can be anything. There's no, there's no fashion show there. It's whatever you feel comfortable stretching. And if you want to bring actual yoga clothes, you can. If you just want to um, bring a pair of stretchy gym shorts and a tank top, good to go. Uh, but just think about comfort and stretching. A uh, lightweight jacket. Um, it, again, doesn't typically, typically get chilly, but we had that hurricane go through and so it was a little chilly that evening and so being in a lightweight jacket and especially the next morning it was pretty windy um, it was comfortable having a lightweight jacket on. Plus, you're going to want something to wear on the plane. It gets very cold on airplanes. Uh, a lot of times, I'll just put it over my legs because my legs get colder than the rest of me. So um, consider just bringing that on the plane with you. Just any kind of light jacket. It can be a hoodie. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. A small backpack or a day pack. Something that you can take with you that you could put money, credit card, whatever, in to go shopping in town. Or if you go on an excursion, you can keep your ID and your credit card and stuff in there. Something small that you can keep with you um, that you wear because you're not going to be wanting to set it down. I usually will um, use a, either a small backpack or um, a little purse that slings over my shoulder or across my, across my body, you know, cross body kind of bag. Um, something lightweight. I'll, when we go shopping in town, a lot of times I use that just to put stuff in. So that's all we're carrying is just that one bag. And it works out really well. But that way you can keep track of your personal belongings. Um, and you're also going to want to be able to have something you can put like a bottle of water in when you go on an excursion because they don't always have stuff readily available unless you're willing to buy it. Um, let's see, pajamas. That's up to you. You can wear them or not, but I would recommend thinking about how it is going to be hot and humid down there. They have air conditioning and it works really well, but you know, when you're sleeping, if you're not typically sleeping with nothing on, you may want to consider pajamas that are comfortable and cool and lightweight. Um, there are dress coats for the a la carte and they are, it's different depending on the a la carte. So I pulled up the listing. I'm going to have to use my glasses because I can't read fine print without them. So the dress code is for the gourmet restaurant, men, long trousers and closed shoes, no tank tops or sleeveless shirts. 
the Peruvian fusion is called casual elegant. Uh, gentlemen, no tank tops or sleeveless shirt, which means that the men can go in um, shorts. Uh, the Alux Mexican cuisine, same thing as the Peruvian, and it's also the same in the Brazilian steakhouse. The buffet, uh, that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's casual, but they don't want you to wear wet swimsuits in and no bare feet. So you'll, you know, have your, if, you, if you're in a swimsuit, just make sure you're not wet when you go in and that you have your flip-flops on. But it's always nice to cover up just a little bit more than that. And then, of course, the snack bar and the sushi bar are outside. And so there's no dress code for those. Uh... Let's see. Oh, and as far as the a la carte's are concerned, there are no reservations required. They can get busy, especially at the peak hours between about oh, 6.30ish and 8. And so what you'll do is you'll walk down to whichever restaurant you want to eat at that night. Um, you go up to the podium where the, the host or hostess will be standing and you give them your room number, tell them how many people and they'll tell you how long it is. They may have a table right away for you, or they may have a bit of a wait. You can decide if you want to wait as long as they say, but it's typically not as long as they say, but it can be. Uh, it just depends on how long people take to eat. And I've seen some people that just basically occupy a table for a long time after they're done eating. So it's just dependent. They're not going to kick people out of the restaurant. Um, we often will plan on eating at a certain restaurant and then if we decide we don't want to wait that long we'll go somewhere else and eat there's other restaurants that are open and then of course there's always the buffet they also um do understand that people have special dietary restrictions and if you have those they're requesting that you contact the concierge who will relay that information to the um, restaurant managers and they will accommodate you as much as they can and they usually do a really, really good job with that. Okay, moving on to another topic. Akama Bay is a giant sea turtle preserve, and they are doing a coral restoration project in the bay. And so there are rules about the chemicals that are introduced into the water. So they really strongly request that you use only reef safe sunscreens, uh, that kind of thing. Not everybody listens to that. Not even everybody knows that or why. The information is available on the resort website and it's also available in the literature that uh, they provide when you check in. But just so you know ahead of time, just get something that says reef safe on it and then you're, you're good. Uh, it just keeps the coral from being contaminated and they really have done a wonderful job of getting that reef to come back. It's, there's still areas where it's struggling, but it's recovered amazingly from the damage that was done by so many people with so many chemicals on them and, and just not even caring or being respectful of the fact that that's a coral reef. It is the second largest coral reef in the world, second only to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Um, it's called the Mesoamerican Reef. So it's important that we try to, you know, do what we can to not just preserve it, but to encourage it to recover from our damage to it. Uh, yes, there is damage that has occurred from hurricanes, but a lot of it is not hurricanes. Uh, they also have, as I said, giant sea turtles. That is their home. That is their nesting place. They nest all up and down the coastline. Akamal Bay is one of the busier areas for nesting. And they have teams of scientists and volunteers that work every single day during nesting and hatching season, which begins at about March is when the nesting season kind of begins. It's really kind of starts in earnest in May and then it, it runs until about September is when the last nests are really laid. And then from about June all the way through November is hatching season. And so if you're there between the months of June and October, you're likely to see both hatchings and nestings. Um, in fact, it's 
almost a foregone conclusion. That plus you will be able to see turtles and when you're swimming in the bay. Uh, if you want a guarantee of seeing turtles, you can pay $50 a person to some tour guides up at the other end of the bay and they'll take you out to where there's an area that's roped off that is restricted and that is where the turtles mainly graze and so you're guaranteed to see them. But they do leave that area. There's, they don't have rules applied to them. And they often will come down into the bay where um, right out in front of the resort. So um, that is yet another reason to be mindful of the chemicals you're introducing to the bay because that is their home. Uh, and beyond that, insect repellent. Yeah, you're probably going to want some, but depending on the time of year that you go, you may not need it. During the hotter summer months, you need insect repellent. Most people do. Some people don't seem to be bothered by mosquitoes at all, but I am, and I know a lot of people are. And so I've done a lot of testing of different products down there, and the one that I find that works the best is called Sawyer's. And anything that is 100% deep, deep, DEET, or has, I think it's pericardin, uh, you know, check me on that, um, I'll throw some pictures up here of different products that I've used and have had good success with, but if I'm going to use that, I do not go near the water, and if I know there's a turtle, because the turtle, the hotel has their own um, turtle expert, and he will often coordinate releasings of hatchlings. That's another whole long story. But if they're doing a release, guests are permitted to participate. But there's a good chance that you may be touching one of the hatchlings. And if you have those chemicals on you, you should not be because you could kill one of them. Um, so if I'm thinking of participating in one, I'll just risk that down on the beach where the breeze is really moving, I'm not going to encounter any mosquitoes. And then as soon as I come back up to the jungle side, that's when I'll put it back on. Uh, but yeah, look for reef safe chemicals. Snorkel gear. You don't have to snorkel. Most people don't, um, but a lot of people do. We do. We enjoy it because it's just an amazing other world out there. And being salt water, it's very buoyant. You just can float along and just leisurely look at what's, look at the world that's in there. Or you can be more athletic and just really go out and look for stuff. Um, that's not my style, but a lot of people like it. So if you're planning to do that, you can bring your own snorkel gear, and I do recommend it because you'll be able to go to, um, for instance, a dive shop and have a mask fitted to your face, but it's not required. If you if your mask doesn't fit you well, there is a chance that um, it could, you could have problems with sometimes the water seepage and you have to stop and get the water out and then put it back on. Um, but if you've got a good fitting mask, that shouldn't be a problem. I also don't like to use used equipment, even though I know that they clean and sanitize it after each use. I just feel better knowing that it's just me that's used it. But if you're not going to bring your own, or if you don't, and then when you get there, you decide you want to try snorkeling, the resort has a dive shop, and they have everything available. You can either use it for free, I think it's an hour or two hours a day, or you could rent it for $5 a day for as many days as you want to use it. Um, and they've got really good professionals that are working that stand. You can uh, arrange dive tours, things like that, diving equipment. Uh, I don't dive. I don't know that I ever would because you have to go out in really deep water to dive. Most people do. So it's just not something I've ever done, but I've thought about it. So you know, if you have your own gear, bring your gear. If not, you can rent it there. Okay, moving on. Things to prepare for. Um, they do have normal, <laughs> normal outlets. Um, I should say it's USA friendly outlets in the rooms all over the resort. So you don't need any special adapters or um, any of that kind of thing. Um, they do provide free toiletries in the rooms. They've got this great brand of honey shampoo and bath wash. It's, I love it. And But they don't provide conditioner, if I'm remembering correctly. Maybe they do, but I don't think they do. I think it's body wash, 
shampoo, lotion. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then um, they also provide natural loofahs, which are nice. Um, so bring a conditioner if you use one. I always bring my own shampoo and conditioners, but I tend to use their shampoo because I just love the way it smells. Um, you don't need a card to have a beach towel. A lot of resorts require you to, you know, bring a certain card and you trade that in for a towel. And at the end of the day, you bring your towel back and get your card back. Um, they have towel stands all over the resort. They request that you not take more than a couple towels per person. Um, and you don't really need to because they're always available. So you're not going to have a situation where you're not going to be able to find a clean towel. Um, what's included in your a la carte? All of your meals, all of your snacks, all of your drinks, and that's any kind of drinks. Um, the sushi bar, the snack bar, room service is included. It's 24 hours a day. Um, all of the activities are included. The yoga, they have stand-up paddle boarding. Um, I already talked about the snorkel gear is not included except for that one time a day for a limited amount of time. Um, but then the, the spa services are not included and they do have a menu. Um, when you when you check in, you can look at the menu or you can look at it online. Um, it's not cheap, but yeah, a lot of people loved it. We're probably going to do it again. We did it once before. Um, but all the a la cartes are included. There's very little that's not included. So, yeah. I want to toss in here really quickly um, some tips about packing and how to uh, make sure that you have the best chance of having all of your baggage arrive safely at all of your destinations and not get lost or if it does get lost have it reunited with you um, first um, if you're choosing luggage now try not to choose black a million people have black suitcases and they're really hard to, to distinguish one from another but if that's what you have now that's what you have um, get baggage tags luggage tags and have them be very easy for you to distinguish and to see from a bit of a distance. You know, as it's coming off, coming down the carousel, you can see it. Um, neon colors, some, something that's really going to grab your attention. And have them, if you can, all match so that you can get all of yours identified quickly and not mixed up with somebody else's. Um, in those luggage tags, make sure you put your contact information. Um, not your home address, but a way for the airline to contact you to get your bags reunited with you. Um, inside each bag that you're going to check, put a paper that has your contact information and your travel itinerary in a pocket where it's visible. So if somebody opens your suitcase, they can see right away. And that's a lot of times what airlines will do if somehow your luggage tag got separated from your suitcase and they, they've lost your luggage, the um, luggage attendants will open the suitcase and see if there's any identifying information in there. So put something right there where they can readily see it so they can get your bag reunited with you quickly. A lot of times if this has happened on your vacation, they'll get your baggage to you at whatever place you're staying, which is why you want to put your itinerary on there. Um, you're also going to want to take a picture of the inside of the suitcase so that if you feel like something's been stolen, you've got a, a visual representation of it. Also, if your bag does match somebody else's and you didn't put contact information in there, you can show the people there at baggage claim, yes, this is my suitcase because here's a picture of what's inside and it matches when you open it up. Um, try to arrive on time for your flights uh, where you're actually checking the bag that that point where you're checking the bag because that gives the ground crew more time to get your baggage to the correct flight if you've got a really short turnaround it's harder for them to get it on your flight they'll do what they can to get it on a flight to where you're going but it won't always end up on your flight if there's a really short turnaround um, so limit your connections where you're going to be um, changing from one plane to the next um, and have a, a, an ample amount of time for that to occur on the ground. Um, 
when you're packing your suitcase, make sure that if you're packing medication, um, don't pack all your medication in your checked bag. If it gets lost, you're out medication. Put it in your checked or your carry-on luggage and have enough in your carry-on for the entire trip. That way, if your uh, checked bag does get lost, you're not scrambling to try to find some way to fill your prescription while you're in a foreign country or wherever. Um, that's pretty much all I can think of to make sure that your bags get reunited with you. But I, I have told people this before and they didn't put any identifying information inside their suitcase. They did not have um, luggage tags that had identifying information on them and their luggage was lost and it took weeks to get the luggage reunited with them when they were at home. And this is bags that were bright yellow, so they were easy to identify. Um, but they still took a long time to get them reunited. And that, that shouldn't happen if you could avoid it. Um, and that's also a one last tip. When you're packing, kind of spread things out a little bit. If you have more than one bag, even out what you're packing between the two bags. So if you lose one, you have enough stuff in the other one. Um, for instance, half your shirts in one and half in the other, that kind of thing. And when you have your personal bag or your carry-on, put a full change of clothes in your carry-on and never check your valuables. Always keep them in your carry-on. Because if they get lost, even with you doing all you can to get your baggage reunited with you, there is a chance that it's just gone. So always put your valuables in your carry-on luggage. When I'm talking about the actual travel experience, you're going to um, need your passport. That should be the only identification that you need. My recommendation is that you make paper copies of your passport photo page, um, a driver's license, and um, if you have like a medical card, an insurance card, make a paper copy of that to take with you. You probably won't need it, but if you should, it's nice to have it with you. And if you should lose your passport, going to the local consulate or embassy with a paper copy of it, it's so much easier to get things sorted out. Um, you're also gonna wanna have a hard copy of your travel itinerary mostly for your own reference so you know oh, well we are we need to catch this flight at this time yada yada um and we're here's proof that we booked this type of room that kind of thing um so i i make paper copies of all of the travel paperwork and have that in a folder um, in my carry-on and um, we're not bringing carry-ons this time we're just doing personal bags so it'll be in a folder in my personal bag you're also going to want to um prepare for navigating through customs and immigration at the Mexico airport. It's not hard. It's really, really easy. And this, they do this constantly. So it's been very streamlined over the years. And um, you're just, you're going to first go through immigration. Um, before you leave the U S you're going to want to go online. I'm going to drop the link for the uh, website to fill out ahead of time the immigration form and then you just you can I think that they you have a digital no you you print off a copy and um, when you go through immigration they're going to want to see that paper and your passport that's all they need to see you then um, when they stamp your passport they are going to tear the top portion off of that immigration paper and they're going to tuck into your passport the bottom portion keep that with you do not lose it I mean, if you do, it's not a tragedy, but it's just so much simpler just to keep it together it's because when you leave the country, they're going to want to have that back, that, that bottom portion. There's also um, customs. When you go through immigration, you know, they're going to go directly into baggage claim, pick up your bags, and then um, go through customs, which is so much easier than it ever used to be. It's practically not even a checkpoint anymore. Um, they may pull you aside, they may not. If they don't, great, you can just sail through. If they do, just be patient with them. Um, they're really mainly looking for people bringing things in that are not legal. 
Um, once you're through Customs and Immigration, then you're going to be navigating the, the well, for lack of a better term, um, it, it's like a, a feeding frenzy for sharks. I don't want to scare you. But it's mainly timeshare employees that are posing as approved transportation contact point that you they're gonna they're gonna wave you over they're gonna t you know try to get you to stop they're gonna want to look at your paperwork or they're gonna ask you what transfer company um you need to come talk to me you need to come talk to me no you don't you can be polite if you want and say no thank you no thank you or you can do what I do which is the safest method and just keep walking just look like you own the place and just keep walking. You're going to walk down through that hallway past all these people in the very official looking uniforms. I mean, if it's a police officer, obviously you're going to stop. But if it's just these people, and I think the uniforms are brown, if I remember. It might be blue. I don't know. Anyway, you're going to go straight for the doors that take you to the ground transportation. And that's where you're going to go and look for your transfer company. And they're all out there waiting. They aren't allowed inside the airport. They have to wait outside. And they're also going to try to get you to come over and, and you know, oh, you, know, you come over here. I'll get you a taxi, you know, that kind of thing. You know who you're looking for. We are using USA Transfers. And they actually have an app that you can download on your phone. You can go on their website on USA Transfers. Um, or you, it's also listed under Entertainment Plus. And on there, you just download the app. And it actually will give you the geolocation that you can follow to the guy that's waiting for you to get you on your transport. Um, it's that simple. And I know it didn't sound all that simple, but it really is simple. Um, on the way back out of Mexico, um, once you've checked your baggage in, you're going to then um, show proof of what's known as the tourism tax. Now, this is not done at baggage check-in. It's done between there and the entrance to um, security, the security checkpoint, which is actually up an escalator. So before you get to the escalator, um, there's going to be these people standing there asking to see if you've paid your tourism tax. And I can't remember what it's called, but I'll also drop that link here. That's something you'll pay. You can pay that before you ever get there. Um, I think it's $11 a person. It's not expensive and it actually helps to cover a lot of the infrastructure that you're going to be dealing with right now because there is heavy construction on the roads in and out of that airport. Um, they've had such a boom in tourism that it, it's insane um, how many people come and go through that area. And so they've had to really work on the infrastructure. Um, when getting ready, to come to Mexico, you will want to be at the airport two hours before your your flight leaves for Mexico. Um, because it's an international flight, it takes longer to get checked in. And when you leave your resort to go home, um, again, you will be using your transfer company. Um, we pay a round trip transfer in advance and then USA Transfers comes and picks us up. They will tell you what time they're going to be picking you up based on what traffic conditions are going to be so they can get you back to the airport two hours before your flight leaves. And right now they're telling people five hours before. That's a long time, but this is peak season. So I'm hoping and expecting that as we get closer to when we're leaving in October, it is going to be more like two hours again. We'll see, but you know, prepare for that. Um, that's pretty much covers everything that I wanted to go over. So um, the highlights are um, Go through your packing and make sure you have everything you're going to want to have for the kind of vacation you're going to want to spend. Uh, make sure that all of your on-beach toiletries are reef safe. Um, pay your tourism tax before you leave for, the, for your trip. And also fill out your immigration form before you leave and have that printed off and ready to go. Um, get the USA Transfers app downloaded on your phone to help you navigate to your transfer um, and then just be ready to relax 
If you have any questions, hit me in the comments below or contact me if you have my contact info. Um, I'm mainly directing this video to our little travel group, but you know, anybody can glean from this what they need. And if you're not sure about an explanation I've given or if you have more questions, hit me up. Um, I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what I don't know. Uh, things do change. Resorts change. And Mexico changes. Airports change. Everything changes. But this is my, the most current information that I've been able to get both from our trip just eight months ago, ten months ago, something like that. And also from staying on top of the changing news for Mexico, for that particular area of Mexico. Um, other than that, Here's a little, a little more of a peek at what's coming. So, bon voyage.